Brian, man, buddy, how you doing? Thanks very much for joining me. Hey, man, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. And uh, I really appreciate what you do in your channel and you coming on my streams in the past too. Hey, no, don't worry. So everyone, all, to all, welcome to all the viewers. Um, this is the first of what's hopefully going to be a series of interviews with leading lights in the Richard Hart crypto space. We're going to interview them in my style and hopefully get a few nuggets of information from them while we're at it. My style is to get straight to the chase, get into the content, get it fact filled for people. So that's what we're going to do. And um, yeah, so what I'm going to do Brand buddy is just to introduce you. And um, I think most people probably know who you are anyway. However, what I'm finding, I don't know about you, is I'm getting a lot of people now that are sacrificing into Hex who got into Pulse and Pulse Chain and, um, sorry, sorry, staking into Hex rather, they got into Pulse and Pulse Chain. It's late here in the UK. And um, so there's a lot of new people, so not everyone will know you. So I'll do a bit of an introduction if that's okay. So, right, let's go. Let's let's dive straight in, shall we? So, Valiant Brand, Brand Man, Brand Hammer. You've got the best nicknames in the space, dude. <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> yeah, you don't well, choose the nicknames you have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? There's a seriously, I think they hint to how popular you are in the space. I think it's because you are universally liked and and you know and highly regarded. And that's why I think that they signify the fact that you are a very popular guy. And that's why I was so thrilled. I really wanted, as you know, to you to be the first person that I interviewed. And I'm I'm really privileged and honored that uh that you um that you wanted to do this with me. So thank you very much. Of course, dude. Yeah, you're doing a really good job and this community is really something that's growing into something very powerful. Isn't it just? Yeah, I'm loving. I'm really loving it. It doesn't feel like work at all, although for me like you it is. But anyway, it's not yeah. about me. It's all about it's all about you today, buddy. Anyway, talking <laughs> about you, I think we've uh, I think we share a we share a certain passion for something. I'll just flash something up on the screen. <laughs> you still hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, yeah. Well, sir. <laughs> I, I watched. I watched the whole video of this, and uh, why? And I've, I know a little bit about shooting. And what was interesting was you were twisting around the side of that, so you were off balance when you were shooting those targets, and you were still hitting them all, even though you were off balance. And I know enough about shooting to know how difficult that is. As soon as you're tipped over and off balance, shooting from a standing point, and particularly with that, with what you've got there, um, is really difficult. So I was really impressed with that, dude. <laughs> you know, thanks, dude. It's actually uh, so <laughs> one of the hexagons. It's a junior USMC. Uh, he yeah, kind of yeah. lives next to me, just a, a few cities away. Oh, wow. And, anyways, him and I, we've been meaning to hang out. And long story short, that was uh, that was my first time actually doing that kind of shooting, and the first time shooting wow. that gun. Uh, yeah, I just bought it, and uh, him and I did like a a couple no trial way. runs, you know. But but yeah, it was just the first time that that I had done that. And he's like, Bran. You know, don't stand stationary in front of a target. We need to move. And so the first couple times, it, it took some getting used to with like the maneuver. And then that one was the yeah. last of the the three tries. And anyways, it's fun, dude. I love it. Uh, Self defense, personal protection, and and just a hobby is pretty much what that is. Oh no, you were crushing it because you were leaning right around it as if you were shooting around the corner of a building, and you were really <laughs> off balance, and you were still hitting the target. So that was absolutely awful. And you know, else it reminds me of. Um, it reminds me of the opening sequence of Point Break. You're probably too young. I don't know if you've seen the movie. Oh, I My remember that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Swayze, My, right? But, Swayze? Yeah, Patrick that's Swayze? right. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Keanu Reeves. And it's the opening yeah. sequence with Keanu Reeves. And he's and he's in a range just like that. And he clears it. And it so reminds me of that. So that was absolutely awesome. Yeah, my favorite movie of all time. If anyone's not seen it, I suspect, I suspect, every, I suspect everyone has. Yeah, yeah. So... um no, that's absolutely brilliant, buddy. So yeah, um, and uh, sorry, just <laughs> just lost my thread for for a moment. Yeah, so um, so if anyone was thinking of um, going after your keys, <laughs> they probably best not. <laughs> <laughs> well, and there's there's always stuff that you can do. Like obviously, you know, none of that is intimidating yeah. or anything. It's just something I like to do. But but yeah, yeah there's it. always ways that you can keep your keys secure without even needing such things too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ch change of tack now. Um, so I was watching in, in researching for this interview. I was watching your very first ever video, and I, and, it, and mm. it was um, I think I think you felt compelled. It was on your iPhone, and you were in the back of a yard or somewhere. And I think you just felt you had so much appreciation for Richard Hart that you just you felt the need to come on and just thank him, basically, which is typical of you and typical of the character. And, um, but in it, you said something very interesting. You said, uh, mm. mostly you were focused on your appreciation to Richard, but you also mm. said, 
I'm a good judge of character and, and, mm. and Richard's, a, Richard's a really good guy. And um, that really resonated with me. I don't know if you want to comment on that or, um, but I've got yeah. some thoughts on that, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah, of course. So yeah, I've, I've always been very, uh, I guess, intuitive or good with people kind of being able to, because there's a difference between what I'm telling you right now and if what I'm telling you is factual, you know, and so many people in life Absolutely. I've learned, they they might tell you one thing to your face when they, they look at you in the eye exactly as if they were right. honest. And then sometimes they might do the other thing. And so we saw that in 2017 with crypto. But with Richard, I always thought, hey, I don't mind this flashy stuff, this candelabra, all this other stuff. Um, it's the person that I've always listened to. And I've always uh, chased adversity versus running away from it. And so Richard, he's been you know, down to earth and honest since day one about his intentions, which is just helping people. Yeah. So if anyone's new to uh, Richard Hart and maybe they were looking at getting hold of Pulse Chain or Pulse X on, on launch day um, and they're generally just taking a look in, this is interesting. You see, because I'm exactly the same, I like to think that I'm a very good judge of character. And um, so my question is, and this is something that I've been thinking. So when you said that on that video, your very first video, and it was a video where you were talking about your involvement in Hex, I'd like to ask a question. To what extent do you think that the people that got in on Hex in the early days, the Hex OGs or the people that got in early, were all exceptionally good judges of character? Because they didn't, they didn't listen to the mainstream YouTubers. They didn't mm. listen to the FUD. They made their mm. own judgment. And my goodness, it didn't have to pay off for them, and it hasn't half paid off for you, hasn't it? Mm. Yeah, it's it's a it's a good observation that you make. Um, as far as what percentage or how many of the people, as you mentioned, that were in early, because there's a difference between getting in early and like staying in, right? Yes. And so sometimes True. fear, uncertainty, and doubt can definitely uh, make people that are less certain or that. Uh, have less of a gnosis of it, they can uh, be a little bit more shaky and, and rock the boat. So the point is, is to answer your question, I think a lot of the people in the community do have good uh, lie detectors and do have good personal skills. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, good lie detectors. And I suppose that ability, that that lie radar, also stopped them from uh, being shaken out so much by the dips because there were seven mm. or eight significant dips, weren't there? Which yeah. was something Richard was saying in his last stream as well, wasn't he? That we've had we've had seven or eight of these, and uh, he was saying again that an eighty percent retrace for Hex is is a golden opportunity, and uh, that what was he saying? We could, we could ten X on a twenty mil buy, and we could double mm. the price of Hex could double on a candle. I wasn't sure if he meant a five minute candle or a six hour candle, but hey, I can wait six hours to see the price of Hex double, can't you? <laughs> oh man. Well, and so like the thing is too with that is it's not just hearsay and it's not just uh you know, it's not just words that haven't happened before. Richards talked about the the day that it happened, right? The Godwill, who was an Ethereum Genesis wallet, they purchased 10,000 Ethereum worth of hex and as Richard has mentioned that has happened in the past and that could happen in the future. Um, it, double, it did double the price immediately of Hex and the price never went back down, even though people were went on a double, um, but the price never went back down to where the Godwill had initially bought. Yeah, and we're having a green day today, aren't we? Yeah, but it is yeah, fairy, it's, it's amazing. But it is fairy tale stuff for me that people who are good judges of character can end up having done so well out of Hex. And... Uh, you know, I really do believe that uh, there's lots of things which equip one to be successful in life. Obviously, IQ, uh, background, education and contacts. But I would actually argue that this ability to judge, judge, a, judge a person, and particularly now, I think, where we can't see the whites of the eyes quite so well. It's having that intuition, mm. isn't it? By being able to read mm. body language and things and going... No, I don't care what. And also by by not being in the herd and by actually mm. being different to everyone else and saying, no, I, I don't care what you think of Richard. Mm. Okay, he might not have the same taste as me in watches or things, but I'm 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 going to I'm going to invest in the man. I'm going to I'm going to bet on Richard Hart. Mm. Well, that's yeah. why they call it like thinking for yourself, like critical thinking, thinking for yourself. Like, don't let other yes. people think for you. And Richard's shown with results, like. Before he was a Bitcoin OG, I mean, he's got, you can look up the data, yes. it's there, his previous successful business ventures. Indeed. So when did you first decide you were going to get into Hex? I'm interested in that story. 
Yeah, so so I've been in since day one. Uh, I've been following Richard since about March fifteenth, twenty seventeen, and uh, I uh, I jumped I jumped in, man. I was actually about to not quit, but I was very disappointed with the crypto space at the time because once mm -hmm. again, mm -hmm. what I thought was a good judge of character was actually BS, and there was a whole bunch of uh, initial coin offerings and ICOs that that a lot of people invested in that were just you know blatant scams and and fraud and stuff. And so the point is, is as I was about to kind of give up, I was I was a big Litecoin bag holder and things like this. Richard decided, Litecoin. hey, I can I can I can do it better. And so I said, you know what? I'm not going to give up on this space yet because I've been following it every single day. Brilliant. And I, still to this day, since I've gotten in, I've been in it every single day. But then I realized, OK, I'm going to wait for what Richard's got to do. And then once he says go live, I swapped all of my Litecoin for Bitcoin, did the free claim and then sold the Bitcoin for Ethereum and kind of just averaged in on the adoption amplifier. Brilliant. When did that kick in? Because we launched in December 2019, didn't we? So when was it, when would you have been actually putting money into X? Yeah, so December 2nd. Yeah, yeah. So December 2nd was when right. the 351 day launch phase. So so yeah, I mean, I could go back to the AA and in different wallets and different addresses and see um, different averages. And it wasn't on a daily basis that I did like a dollar cost average, but it was kind of just uh, some of the ratios that I looked at. Like, uh, what was it? January 5th, I think it was like 1.8 million hacks per Ethereum. And the big thing too with what Richard says is, once again, he's 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 telling you what you can do to maximize your profit. And he told us about self-referral, clicking on your own referral link. And uh, the cookie itself would give you a 32% bonus. Yeah, because it actually dipped initially, didn't it? And so you were following a dollar cost average strategy. That's very clever. Always the best strategy, isn't it? Unless you've got a crystal ball, DCA is the way to go. And because um, it actually dipped lower at first, didn't it? But uh, you just kept the face, yeah? And I suppose this is back to having the face in the individual. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, faith faith was definitely some of it. And then also like competency too. Like you see in crypto, sure. whether it's Vitalik or some of these other people, it's like, oh, okay, they talk about Ethereum 2.0, which is obviously tough to implement. But then but then you see people that are like actionable and like people that, that have sure. personal skills on top of IQ as well. So, they, so they've got the yin and the yang where some people are usually super smart and they might not be as socially adept. And then sometimes it's the opposite too, but Richard has the best of both worlds. So you're right. There definitely was a whole bunch of, you know, faith put into to Richard and, and just a lot of trust as well, because we'd seen his previous results. And, you know, it's awesome too, that any controversy that was against Hex or Richard Hart, he faced. And so not running away from adversity really showed that, hey, this is a legitimate product that he said it was. Sure. Yeah, no, that's really, that, that's really interesting. So you did a critical analysis. You didn't just, you weren't, yes, you weren't just going on, um, oh, I like the look of this guy or, you know, I like the whites in his eyes, but you were doing a critical analysis, uh, a SWOT analysis. You were looking at it and doing your own research and you came to the conclusion that, um, so it's interesting because there was quite a delay with Hex, wasn't there? And, um, I think yeah. that, uh, the people that were around then, um because they say is don't they history is not usually the best way to measure the future future performance and i actually think we're in a very different time and place this time and one of the reasons that i think that um, we won't be anywhere like anywhere near as delayed with pulse chain is because richard's gone through the building of hex and he's established who the best developers are and he was absolutely raving and he didn't have that experience the first time round, did he and he was actually raving about his developers and his developer team. And he was mentioning that there are 10 of them and, and um, how good they are. And we know, we know now that they just really have to find the sack totals. There's some issue with some irreg irregularity on the node, but he said he didn't even think that would delay launch. And then he can do a two-week announcement. So I was, absolutely, I was absolutely amazed with that. But I am convinced that we're in a different time and place now. And that uh, whilst he could take his time with Hex, I think it's imperative that he... He cracks on with uh, Pulse Chain, mm. and I think nobody is more keenly aware of that than Richard himself. Indeed, I thought at the last stream he looked really disappointed. He wasn't able to give us a date. I think he'd hoped to, and uh, so no, it's very, yeah. very exciting. And uh, yeah, I don't know if you picked up. He he was he was saying how how his his developers can spot um, yeah issues with Ethereum, and they've actually put those recommendations in and they've been adopted. So that's how good Richard's developers are, arguably even better than Vitalik Buterin's developers. Mm. 
Well, yeah, was, and, and yeah, go on. Go and on and developers, they want to be on the better network too, and and they want to not just like the better network, but they they want to continue innovating and they want to continue building. And so, yeah, if you have someone like Richard that not only pays handsomely, right, but he also gets the cream of the crop, then how cool. How cool would it be for someone who is a developer, say at Google or at Microsoft, say when they IPO'd, to say, hey, I helped contribute, build this amazing product for what it is today. And how many people are going to be using Pulse Chain on a daily basis? And some of Richard's developers can say, hey, I helped contribute or I helped do commits that will make this chain uh, the success that it really will be. Yeah, you know, it's funny. You uh, had never really occurred to me until I just heard you say it. And when you said it, it sounded so blindingly obvious. But that's right. They want they want to be they want to be working for the NASA, don't they? They want to be working for the person who's who's expanding and pushing the boundaries. And as you say, next day he wants an incentive token. Token. Then he's going to do uh, a wallet, and then he's going to make sure the wallet can can usefully sidestep the EU regulations if possible. And uh, no, that's genius. That's right. I hadn't I hadn't even thought of that. Um, yeah, brilliant. So, um, talking about Hex a little bit, because, um, I, I really think that's the, the lost opportunity at the moment that people are overlooking, but he was saying that the Hex price is going to blow our minds, wasn't he? And he was giving the examples mm. of what a 20 mil, mil buy could do, that it would 10 exit, that we could, we could see the price of Hex double on a candle. And, um, for me, the Hex will always be his flagship. And, mm. and and he confirmed that really for me when he said that he just can't tell what's going to perform best over the next 12 mm. months in terms of price performance, whether it's going to be HEX, PLS, and PLSX. Now, whilst the consensus is that PLS and PLSX is just going to melt our faces, blow our minds, um, whether it's going to be 500X or 10,000X over two years, well, you know, we can debate. But either of those two scenarios I'm very comfortable with, anything in that range, and uh, the idea, it must be, it must w fill your your heart with joy, the idea that Hex could even do anything like that at this stage. But Richard's saying it could. And I think he points, doesn't he, to the price performance of Bitcoin in year three, four, five, um, which was every bit as, I think, as good as year one and two. And indeed, that is a fair comparison because, because Hex has actually performed slightly better than Bitcoin did mm. in years one and two. So it's a, it's a, sound, it's a sound comparison, isn't it? Yeah, and, and and once again, not having because because faith, like the the little definition of faith, is kind of believing something that isn't there, things like that, right? But when you have the knowledge of of what the smart contract was designed to do, built to do, uh, all of the intentions behind it, and then you're totally right as well. The the mention that you have with Bitcoin, um, I mean, Hex is just a little bit over two years old, right? So we're seeing it already had ten thousand X, a whole bunch of success. But if you look at Bitcoin, it obviously did 6.9 million X. That's a whole bunch. But if you look at it at its beginning, uh, Hex, Hex really is just getting started. And Hex actually has a lot more, thanks to Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin paved the way, but Hex Definitely. has a lot more development and a lot more momentum. And you're totally right. If you see those three charts uh, you know, uh, from the beginning to where they're at now, Hex, Bitcoin, and Ethereum, then you see the, the angle of what Hex is doing. And it's doing the same thing, but just more quickly. Absolutely, and what's nice as well is that the the gas fees on Ethereum have come down enough to make um, to make it realistic for people to pick up Hex, even if say they they just had a hundred dollars they wanted to spend. So I think the gas fees now are about twenty dollars, whereas the gas fees were about ninety. So obviously, um, if you were a kid in a coffee shop and you could only find a hundred dollars, it wasn't really viable. Indeed, it was mm. only about six weeks ago, eight weeks ago that, that I did tried to onboard a kid in a coffee shop and he went through everything <laughs> and he said to me, he said to me, oh, I can't do it because the gas fees are more than I have yep. to spend. And that yeah. hadn't even occurred to me because, you know, I'm not in that place and, I, and that hadn't sure. occurred to me and I felt bad, etc. cetera. So, mm. um, yeah, so I got him in on the uh, PLSX sacrifice. But, um, the nice. uh, yeah, and now, of course, it is. It's, even if you only had $60 to buy some Hex, and you pay twenty dollars gas fee. Well, you're in then, aren't you? You've still got forty dollars into the hex, and and you're in the game, and it's it becomes a viable a viable alternative. And of course, the yeah. the big investors they don't they don't care, and that's why Ethereum continues to do as it does. You know, Richard was saying about people spending millions, literally millions, on NFTs uh, on Ethereum, and just how high the gas fees are are there. It's absolutely astronomical. So. Um, 
No, I thought that was I thought that I thought that was interesting as well. When did you last? I know you've got a passion for onboarding people, and I onboard. I've also onboarded somebody who certainly wasn't worried about the gas fees quite recently in Hex. When did you last onboard somebody? Uh, it's funny that you say that, and it's funny that we share a similar passion with uh, mm -hmm. self defense and in firearms and stuff. Um, it was actually most recently at the firearm store uh, when I was <laughs> uh, purchasing it. an item and. Uh, you know, background check and and finally received it. And and the guy, uh, when I went to go first fill out the papers, he goes, hey, you know, what is that hex? You know, what is that hex hat or what is that shirt? I forget oh, which cool. one he asked. And so that's why I always wear the merch around. And once again, I think it's very cool to represent. But but uh, so I told him a little bit about it. And then the the week later, actually, it was about two weeks later when I went to go pick up the uh, the material again, he told me, Dude, in the past two weeks since I had first told him about it, three of his friends had already told him about Hex. And I'm thinking, wow, wow. dude, I've never heard that kind of experience before. And so it wow. really just goes to show you that it is be it is becoming more popular. He did mention, as you say, with uh, with something like Pulse Chain, the fees are really going to be uh, a solution and they're going to be solved compared to, say, onverting versus Ethereum. I love because all this. Yeah, because it was one hundred and fifty dollars, and this, is, this, is, that and this is the anecdotal evidence. I know, but it's it's useful, isn't it? When you actually, you know, I'm having similar experiences. You know, people in the comments saying, "Oh, I, I I got in on the pulse sacrifice, and now I've just bought some hex," and that's fantastic. So there are a lot of eyes on hex. I think there is this mistaken belief. Well, understandably, I suppose it's the precautionary principle. People are holding off, see what happens. You know, on, on the snapshot, on the snapshot, on the launch to the price of hex on Ethereum and things, and, and possibly just holding off to to get hex on Pulse Chain. But of course, if you get hex now, it's copied over, isn't it? Which is absolutely fantastic. I think it's the big mistake. Obviously, to make lots of money in crypto, you have to be doing what the fifteen percent of the herd are doing, and not what the eighty-five percent of the herd are doing. And I personally think at the moment that uh, eighty-five percent are holding back. They're not re renewing their stakes. They're holding off. They're holding off. They've got into Pulse Chain. They're watching your videos. They want to get Hex, but they're not sure now's the right time. There's quite a few of the guys, you know, who were into Hex from the beginning, who, who are doing the, the videos with like us, who were saying, hold off. And I, I think that's bad advice. But it goes back to Richard Hart. This is why I'm a totally Richard Hart-focused channel. I only promote yeah. ch cryptos that have got RH in front of them. And because I have such faith in the guy, or belief rather, and sure, yeah, sure. I, I'm not, not saying faith, but, you know, I have, oh, trust me, I have, I have done the background checks and I've done the D, DYOR. Um, but because I have so much confidence in the competency of Richard, I'm happy recommending, I'm happy saying to people, I don't, I don't mind sticking my neck out, you know. I mean, I called the 10 cent bottom. I said to my viewers, this is it. We're not going any lower. I was I was I was buying aggressively from twelve. I said ten cents, and and you know that's a risky play, you know, because you don't want to get it wrong. As uh, not comparing myself to Elon Musk, but as Richard Hart was saying in his last stream, Elon Musk was recommending to people buy Dogecoin at the top on national mm. television. On national television, dude. So mm. imagine if somebody sold their house because Elon Musk said. Uh, and going yeah. back to the anecdotal evidence, I have my friends. They say, "Oh yeah, I'm in crypto." What I say, "What have you got?" And they show me, and they got Dogecoin. And they go, oh, yeah, and Elon Musk has bought Dogecoin. And I said, no, they haven't, buddy. He goes, yeah, 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 no, mm. they have. He has. Elon Musk has bought Dogecoin. And you think, oh, you just can't help some, you just can't help some mm. people. Particularly when they get to my age. But you're, mm. you're a lot younger than me. But when Stuck you get to my age, it's, a, it's a, yeah, a lot of the time. I like to think I'm not. Not everyone is. No, you can't, yeah, you can't generalize, but, but a lot of, of people course. are, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And um, what did you think of the Alex Lorenzo, Lorenzo stream? And I thought that was quite good. I thought he asked a number of questions from a different angle. It just allowed Richard to explain things a little bit better. And uh, mm. I, I thought it was really good personally. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. And uh, I think a lot of us were, were kind of, uh, we were intrigued because we'd never seen that kind of title before of, Richard Hart loves puppies and same thing. In the description. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he explained why he had uh, chosen that because of, you know, being oh, yeah, yeah. banned for time. So, so the point is, uh, to your question, I thought it was a really good interview and, and I really liked it because that was the first time that I had heard of Alex Lorenzo. And I, I like, you know, Richard can do the hostile uh, debate style and he can, you know, do the bring your heroes here to die, but then he can also do the calm, casual collected uh, educational stream which is what that was and i think he did answer some 
questions that maybe haven't been brought up for a while. And Richard really was in his flow. I, one of the things I've really noticed is that he has, um, I mean, he's always been at a high level when it comes to promoting his cryptos and the messaging and, you know, the critical messages that he wants to convey. But he he has taken it to a whole nother level now, I think, when it comes to, well, particularly Pulse Chain launch. And I wonder how much of it has been a positive influence from this Patrick guy who he has helping him with the PR. But without a doubt, everything that Richard's saying is just so, so from somebody who, used to influence senior politicians and things and had to think about are the media going to pick up these messages and things certainly I, i've rarely rarely if ever seen anything as good as what richard's doing at the moment and i wonder if the slight delay in pulse chain launch has allowed him to really really perfect and finally tune his uh, his messaging which is so, it's so on point at the moment it's amazing yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and as you say like the more times that you have to say something whether it's an interview or anything else the more yes. honed your pitch becomes and the value proposition is what that is conveying value why should the people care with what richard is saying i'm jumping around a little bit but what about this rumor hope everyone's okay with that what about this rumor that um uh, binance might be listing hex have you heard that yeah yeah i saw uh so i had seen i've been spending a lot less time on social media but i had seen funding jim and he had showed uh i think it was under binance us and it showed Pulse Chain, I think, uh, and he had kind of showed like a little screen grab. And and the thing is, is so many people that doubted Richard with Hex, uh, they they might not even like Hex, right? But Pulse Chain itself is literally a win-win for the whole ecosystem. And and sure, people, I mean, Binance too, right? Binance has hard had hard forked the uh, the code of Ethereum for BSC, but then their code is nothing similar to say Pulse Chain that's doing the world's largest airdrop. So. I think a lot of people are intently looking with uh, a whole bunch of eagerness and, you know, waiting for the launch. Oh, man, I think it's going to be crazy, particularly Pulse Chain. Personally, I think Pulse Chain is going to go first, like a like a crazed dog out of the trap. And I think PLSX is just going to take its time a bit. Then I think people are going to flip some of that into PLSX and then PLSX is just going to go off. I think the key thing is if you did sacrifice for PLSX or if you're able to pick up PLSX cheap on launch, it's just hold, hold, hold and wait, wait, just be patient. And I think that's the name of the game, isn't it? Um, mm. You know, we, 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 ju we just need to be patient and I think it's going to go absolutely mm. crazy. Mm. The, um, talking about, totally. uh, so where, so I, I suspect that it's going to be come launch that the price of X is going to absolutely rocket. But um mm. Could I could I ask you where you think the price of hex might be in say six months time? Man, that's a that's a good question. I mean, so, I mean, in six months time, I could see the pulse chain. I could see the the pulse chain network itself being launched. You know, right? That's a uh, pulse con will have happened already by then. Absolutely. Absolutely. But um, I mean, it's 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 tough, right? The the price prediction, obviously, it's just kind of vanity just like market cap is but but i mean so we really close to surpassing the all-time high of, of 56 cents we're we're not too far away from from a dollar uh once you do surpass that previous all-time high uh, i would say that we could be i don't know my guess is in six months i mean yeah we we could be past the all-time high uh we could we could be kind of inching towards that dollar now that everyone that's been long awaiting pulse chain for almost a year now just like hex is uh is finally a launch so if i'm just going to make a ballpark in six months i mean there's going to be more demand and more buy pressure because there's it, it's you know the question has some nuance right like are you talking about both chains are you talking about if if uh if pulsing hadn't launched what the price would be for you know for just hex on ethereum so my guess would be just collectively i could see i could see it being a dollar right between between both ehex and hex i could see you know the value uh rising rather quickly especially as you say once those uh you know networks actually launch and everyone gets their large airdrop uh, i think the value will start to soar well well that was your point actually brian man and i think that's right because you're gonna have so many people getting into pulse chain that um it's almost a given for me you know it isn't um i can't remember the phrase you used but i i, I vanity I don't even think it is vanity to assume that even if, say, three or four percent of all the action that goes into Pulse and Pulsex 
decide that they want some exposure into RHU's other crypto. I mean, it just makes sense, doesn't it? You know, we all know, well, it's all right, we don't all know, but everyone who knows a, bit, a little about crypto investment knows that you don't buy at the high. That's where it's risky. That's where you're getting out. That's where you're selling to the people that are buying. But you, um, but you get in at the lows, and this is this is this is this is a low risk area. So if only a few few percent of the people that get into Pulse Chain decide to have a little exposure into Hex, then um, I think it's going to rock it easily. Mm. We know that from the liquidity, don't we? So no, I I didn't want to lead you, but I think the same. I think I think even assuming we can get out get get Pulse Chain out in the next four weeks, which is what I think is going to happen. Then in six months' time, I think we could be we could be up to one dollar fifty two dollars. I think at least I think at least a dollar personally, because yeah. people are just waiting for that confermation, aren't they? They're holding off as well because they want they wanting to see Pulse Chain launch. They're wanting to see that delivered. A lot of people people don't like buying red. They like buying green. They don't want to get into a project before it's launched. They want to get into it when everyone else has got into it. It's just human nature, isn't it? Yeah. So um, it's funny, and then of course, and then of course, what 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 do we think about the? Um, because going back to your thing, you were saying to me, you know, what, do I assume that um, Pulse Chain's launched in in that in the six months period? Yes, I would. And also, there's mm. the back to the back to the issue of whether a major exchange lists Hex. Well, that's going to make a difference as well, isn't it? Of course. So um, or Pulse Chain. I think they're going to talking about listing Pulse Chain first, aren't they? And then, uh, and then, presumably, somebody would want to very quickly list hex as well. I imagine. Mm. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people see how how much uh, passion, how much drive and energy, uh, whether it be economically or whether it be with the community, that Richard Hart brings to new products and new projects. So you're right. I could see whether it's uh, Binance, right? That that lists because uh, Richard did mention the world's largest exchange uh, that lists Pulse Chain. He did. Well, once he did. once they see that that's successful, yeah, why wouldn't they do Pulse X or Hacks or any of those things? So Richard has said that 2022 this year is the year of scaling, and so we really just got to be patient because the, the the stuff is set in stone, and it's just a matter of time. But it doesn't happen all overnight; it happens slowly. Absolutely, Brad. So winding up, winding up, um, you're a young man that has done exceptionally well in a short time, which is not sure. dissimilar. You remind me a lot, if you don't mind me saying, of a young Richard Hart. And much like yeah. Richard Hart, he, 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 was, he was a multimillionaire, I think, still in his 20s. Did so well that he was able to just sort of take a long break, regroup, did a bit a bit too much video gaming and partying. But then he went back <laughs> and uh, and then decided he was going to have the best best cryptos in the space. And I think he wants to go on to um, do the, the US presidential campaign next. But um, so I was wondering what, what your plans are, if you have any. Do you Are you planning to, um, once we've got through Pulse launch, et cetera, are you going to take some time off and then and then decide what you want to do? Or do you have a, like a life map all planned out? Are you going to, what, what's your feeling? Do you also want to keep working? Because you're a bit of a workaholic, aren't you? Are you just going to keep yeah. going or are you going to take a break? It, you know, it, it, it's passion. I mean, obviously you also have to ask yourself, like, what is the efficacy of what you're doing? Like how how effective something is. And so sure. uh, this, week, this week I've streamed probably a lot more than I have um, since the past, right? But I, I like to do I like to do the weekly live streams because it's almost, and I'm, I'm sorry if there's any background noise. Um, there's no but noise. so, oh, okay, perfect. Um, so well, you've got Joe like, Rogan's mic. You've got Joe Rogan's mic there, so you're laughing. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's perfect. I love it. Um, but so, you're saying so about I, live streams. Yeah, so it's like it's therapeutic to do the live streams, and it's a skill that I've always liked doing. I've always liked teaching. I've always liked learning, and so. I really enjoy the aspect that not only can, you know, cause I've got over 5,000 subscribers and that's a lot of people. And so sometimes it kind of hits you like sudden well syndrome does where it's like, damn dude, I really got over 5,000 people that, that have subscribed to my channel. And so it's really cool to have built something like that. But to, a to ask, uh, to answer your question, I would say that I, uh, I just continue living life. I mean, for me, I've, uh, towards the beginning of Hex, I kind of had an imbalance with, uh, sacrificing a little bit too much. Like I've learned, okay, if you've got good healthy habits, such as working out, going to the gym, cooking food, uh, having a healthy diet, 
then don't sacrifice those for, for short-term things, which is what I had done with some of the, you know, just diving in deep with the Hex uh, family and the, the Hex community. And so I would just say that, yeah, on a daily basis, I mean, whether it's spending time with my family, my loved ones, you know, the girlfriend, um, I don't necessarily think I have anything to, to build per se on Pulse Chain, but I love to support the people that are. And I love phil uh, phil philanthropy and kind of just, you know, supporting the community and kind of just leading by example. So I don't really have any major plans, but uh, aside from just getting getting healthy again, staying healthy, you know, being the, the best version of myself that I can be uh, on a daily basis. And, you know, the, the other thing that I'll say real quick too about the wealth is it, uh, it really does just expose more of who you are, right? And so you see some people that, that get a whole bunch of wealth and, and they might not be able to sustain it because they, they live this glamorous lifestyle that's maybe not sustainable that they can't keep up with. But because mm -hmm. they didn't have it before, now they want to make up for what they lacked in the past. Yeah. yeah. Um, and as we're sort of closing off, what would you say to somebody who got into, because this inevitably happens, I got into Ethereum in 2017 at the top then, uh, most people do. Uh, what would you say to somebody that was getting hex at 50 cents and 40 cents yep. and has, you know, really just been seeing it go down, but is, that it, but is still here watching now? What, what would your message be to them? So first off, it's a great question because someone asked me actually at the Hex conference itself here in Vegas in person, uh, they had asked me that same question. And so my answer is this, is that you you even had mentioned it earlier, you had alluded to the answer that I'm going to give, which is that, um, I mean, everything in life really is cyclical and really are cycles when you, when you look at nature, when you look at businesses, markets, anything. Um, mm -hmm. so, so the point is, is that it's it's done it's done a whole market cycle i would say right i was telling uh one of my family members you know hey dad i think i think 10 cents is the is the bottom and i think that it is the low and stuff and not to say that the the future couldn't you know wick down or things like that but sure. to answer yeah. your question the thing that i'll say is uh you know if you kind of just understand what what you're holding on to what it's done in the past uh if you look on say staker app right you can see the numbers of how many new wallets were created that day? And yeah. it scans the whole Ethereum blockchain. So it's not just you know, it's safe wallets on Staker app, it's, it's everything, including MetaMask wallets. So you see that, hey, there's more buy pressure than sell pressure. And you see that yeah. you know some of the people that are selling and things like that, which is obviously what causes those red candles. Well, you see that it's, it's the train analogy where if someone is jumping on a train and then they get off, well, that train doesn't slow down, that train keeps going. And so if someone, you know, the more people that kind of completely sell all their bag or the more people that have already helped murder the price and create those big red candles, well, then the harder it is for them to do it at an all-time high. And so what you eventually oh, yeah. have is more buyers and sellers, and then the market goes from making a low to then going up again. So I would just say kind of having a little bit of patience. I mean, obviously, it's not fun to see a market cycle and to experience a correction but if you can kind of just flip that you know you said you said the same thing you said people love to buy when it's green and people hate to buy when it's in the red well if you can flip that emotion because that's emotions if you flip that emotional decision into a logical decision which is hey maybe i bought at 40 cents i could i could stake to you know to earn some yield into kind of dollar cost average um from where i had bought in high or as it gets lower, you can do the same thing as well. If someone had more dry powder, they could kind of average in towards the low. And that way it brings their cost basis from say 40 cents, maybe down to 30 cents or 25 cents, depending on how much they averaged in. Well, that was brilliant, Brian, man. And that was really well put. And I love that train analogy. I suppose you're getting the noisy drunks off the train and you're getting better customers in at the next station. But no, but I, I, I love that. That was really, really good. And yeah, and it just feels, doesn't it, like naturally it doesn't want to go any lower. As you say, we mm. could have a black swan event. We could have a wick down, but it just feels that there's going to be so much bounce back if it tries to go below 10 cents that it naturally seems to be the right, it seems to be the point. You know, typically we retraced, I think, 60 to 70 percent. This has been 80 percent. That's a healthy retrace. Our founder has said it's a healthy retrace. In fact, he was saying it again, wasn't he, a couple of days ago? And um, yeah. if that isn't a buy signal, I don't know what is. Um, Brian, that's been absolutely fantastic. If people enjoyed it, please uh, give us a like and a sub on the way out. I should have asked earlier. I don't think I did. And uh, just share around and uh, let us know what you thought. 
Um, might do the next one live, but it was as it was my first one. And uh, also, I know that you much prefer being the interviewer than being interviewed, Bran. So I really appreciate, really appreciate you doing this because I wanted to get started with um, one of the leading lights in crypto, and uh, I couldn't think of anyone better than yourself. Thanks very much, buddy. That's been absolutely awful, awesome. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Cheers, dude. Bye.